We all know that God loves the world so much that he gave his one and only begotten son so that we, you, and me could experience new life. See, I really do believe that it is the purpose of God for you and I to experience new life, but it doesn't stop there. It starts there, that our new life would be constantly transformed and changing and becoming a fruitful life. That's God's goal for your life and mine. New life that translates into a fruitful life. And in Genesis chapter 26, there's so many things that we learn from this chapter this morning. But one of the keys I wanna draw your attention to is that faithfulness leads to fruitfulness. Say, what do you mean? Well, look with me, if you would, in Genesis chapter 26, starting in verse 19. It says that Isaac's servants also dug in the Gerar Valley and discovered a well of fresh water. But then the shepherds from Gerar came and claimed the spring. They said, this is our water, they said. And they argued over it with Isaac's herdsmen. So Isaac named the well Esek, which means argument. Isaac's men dug another well, but again, there was a dispute over it. So Isaac named it Sitna, which means hostility. Abandoning that one, Isaac moved on and dug another well. This time there was no dispute over it. So Isaac named the place Rehoboth, which means open space. For he said, at last the Lord has created enough space for us to prosper in this land. See, I love this. In Genesis chapter 26, Isaac's being faithful to what God's called him to do. And as he's faithful, he encounters difficulty, challenge, obstacles. So much so that he begins to name the place, argument, hostility. Have you ever experienced that when you're walking with God? That God gives opportunity, but then it seems like on the heels of opportunity is obstacle. Well, listen to me, let me have your attention. Remember this equation, opportunity plus obstacle often equals the will of God. See, I really do believe that God's called us to be fruitful. But before we can ever be fruitful, we're called to be faithful. It's like what Paul said to the church in Galatia. Listen to what he says in Galatians chapter 6. He says, don't be misled. You cannot mock the justice of God. You always harvest what you plant. Those who live only to satisfy their own sinful nature will harvest decay and death from that sinful nature. But those who live to please the Spirit will harvest everlasting life from the Spirit. Now here's the point, don't miss this. Verse nine, so let us not get tired of doing what is good. For at just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we do not give up. You see in Genesis chapter 26, Galatians chapter six, I really do believe God has a life for you and I for us, that's fruitful, bearing good fruit. But see, fruitfulness does not come without faithfulness. So wherever God has placed you, maybe you're recognizing, oh, there's opportunity, but there's also obstacle. Hang in there. God is at work because oftentimes, opportunity plus obstacle equals the will of God. And to be fruitful, one must be faithful. So where God has placed you today, be faithful right where he's placed you and trust him that God will make your life fruitful as you stay faithful to him.